What's going on? So, just a quick update, third episode I suppose. What I've done is I have put up the studs um, for the second wall that's going to go on. I have just put vertical studs in, like so, about a metre apart. And then I'm just basically going to put some ply over. I'll probably chuck some, maybe some horizontal studs across and then have foam or not foam but something that's a little bit more dense so yeah we're going to put some horizontal studs across there maybe under the mirror under the windows as well and then scatter some insulation or something not fully insulated because we do want some space air space is is probably the only way or the best way that we're going to get some kind of soundproofing uh, we can talk about soundproofing and i might discuss it now that's what i've done so far in the caravan now i'm going to explain the principle behind what i'm doing all right so we're back in the studio we're going to talk about soundproofing and isolation in general so basically uh get you guys to go and check out bobby Ozinski. uh put his name up on here that's where i got well i learned all my stuff uh, majority of it as well as uni and whatnot that's where i learned he's the guy that like he knows his shit when it comes to acoustics and um room anyway so a lot of the stuff that i'm going to be saying is basically relaying what he teaches so i suppose i'm then going to try and um convert that on a smaller scale and, and apply those principles to the caravan so i suppose the first thing we need to understand is the difference between isolation and acoustic treatment so isolation um, um, we're talking about sound not getting out of the room on top of sound not getting into the room or into the studio uh, as opposed to acoustic treatment which is just getting a room to sound nice you know not having ridiculous amounts of reflections as well as not having a room that's just dead because you don't you don't want a dead room you also don't want a bathroom you know so yeah we just need to first firstly differentiate the two of those um, acoustic treatment and sound isolation now with sound isolation there's a few principles that you need to apply uh, when thinking about sound isolation first principle is mass you need mass to to create good sound isolation we're talking about bricks mortar concrete cement you know that kind of stuff just just really dense and thick we just want a lot of it that's expensive um, I then have to then you know think about transferring that over to a caravan which is impossible I'm not gonna brick a caravan I mean there's so many things that you gotta think about before you know doing stuff to a caravan and that's the, the main factor is weight you really have to think about weight and how much it's gonna weigh and how much can your car tow but then I've also got to think of the bearings on the trailer and the chassis so how much weight can that bear now yeah so you gotta you gotta really think about when you're driving with the caravan <clears throat> there's a whole bunch of you know shit you got to get into as well that I'm, i won't cover you just yet i just wanted to focus on sound isolation and ac acoustic treatment because they are two different things we didn't understand that sound isolation and acoustic treatment are two different things so the first principle we have to think about is mass as i was talking about uh, mass is incredibly expensive uh what we talk what we what to think about when we say mass is brick and mortar cement concrete that kind of stuff so we're obviously not going to be able to do that on the caravan so we have to go to the next best thing which is airspace as much airspace as possible in amongst a little bit of mass there's a chart here I'll pop it up uh, we can see that uh, each section of the chart a b c d e f is the a wall looking at it side on so not front on as you normally look at a wall you're looking at it from the side now the first one is your standard basic stud wall no insulation just plaster plaster or plywood plywood with some studs in the middle uh, that's what you normally find at your house now that's nothing so we, we look at the bottom here we see stc 33 that's basically stc is basically like decibels but for acoustics uh is how much is going to block out basically that's that's how much quieter it's going to be which is not much um you probably you know you're not used to that, that stuff but I'm so safe. um add insulation which is the next uh, one up and you lose an extra three decibels which is not much again that's like going up to that and covering the microphone i suppose i'll uh, move up to c double isolated studs so that's basically if you've i'm sure many of you have heard a room inside a room um, a room inside of a room that's basically what this is is a room inside of a room it's not good it's no good it doesn't work um, i mean it works if you've got mass 
STC 40. You're only getting an extra four decibels when it comes to a room inside a room. And so that's basically building another wall inside the existing room. Obviously, it'd be better than nothing when it comes to my caravan, but it's just too much space. As you can see further up, you know, you're gaining an extra 10 decibels. And it's just, just by removing the plaster wall from the inside, you go up an extra seven if you remove both. All of a sudden you've got this pocket of space where sound can bounce around in and dissipate within the wall. Then obviously if you double plaster boards or the chipboard or the pry board or whatever you're using on the outside, another six decibels. So that's where, to me, that's what's fascinating and that principle there is what I'm going to try and add to the caravan. That's what I'm going to try and utilise to create as much sound isolation as possible. Yeah, creating some space. So in saying that, yeah, that's that's how I'm going to achieve isolation. So that principle is the, I suppose, the principle that I will be applying to the walls. Now, we've got airspace underneath the caravan, which is also awesome. Um, so I can rely on that for low frequencies. I'm not going to use any foam. Acoustic foams, it's useless for sound isolation. And to make it, to use it for acoustic, uh, acoustic treatment you need a lot of it so it's just not not worth it uh, what is worth that is dense bass traps in the corners corners are the issues as well corners are the issues with reflections um, so that's how you treat your room is by paying attention to the corners and I don't mean like the the four corners of the room like every corner in the fucking room there's corners everywhere um, bookshelves are awesome as you can see up here these DVDs act as a diffuser that's right behind my desk um, that's why I've put my desk here is because yeah DVDs bookshelves anything behind the desk will act as a diffuser and stop reflections coming back. Another principle that you need to apply when thinking about sound isolation is to visualize a fish tank. I suppose visualize your room as if it was a fish tank and fill it up with water and then work out where the leaks are going to come from. Where will they come from in your room? It's your windows and your doors. That's where you're basically going to get already just by paying attention to windows and doors you will vastly improve your room. Um, so ceiling walls, um, getting some perplex, some polycarbonate sheets from Bunnings, my intent, that shit is the shit. So I'm going to be putting that on the outside of my windows. Again, creating some small air gaps there in between the windows, perplex and glass. You get sound vibrations bouncing off in and dissipating in the spaces. So I'm just trying to create as many small spaces in <clears throat> in the caravan as possible just to try and really calm down anything coming in and going out anyway so that's that's i wanted to address the principle behind the wall situation and why i'm doing it if you have any questions let me know and yeah take it easy